What's up guys, Ruben Lenten here and uh, welcome to the world of shortline kite surfing. Where do short lines actually come from? What are considered short lines? Who did it first? Who does it best? And why is it so freaking fun? These are the guys that just took it to a whole new level and I'm so curious to find out what setups they ride, how they set up their kite, what goes through their mind and maybe even what they're working on nowadays and also if they have some golden tips for me to achieve that super loop. You can't do a standard kite loop on short lines and just expect it to go under you. The rodeo could start and may never finish. <laughs> After we're just watching Jason go absolutely mental, like fully stretched out above his kite, I have to try this super loop. Let's see if I've got the guts. We're kicking things off with South African wildebeest Joshua Emmanuel, who is without a doubt one of the gnarliest kite surfers in the world. With his 100 plus kilograms, he is a lover of the strong winds and he is the inventor of the super loop. Short lines for me begins sort of at uh, 12, 13 meters. I would say it's considered to be short lines. A much faster kite and with a faster kite it gives you obviously the capabilities of getting the kite from horizontally in front of you to more vertically below you and it's just a yeah it's a rush that you can't uh, quite describe versus a, a late back with normal line yeah i'd say inspiration came from thomas burbley's who used to do unhooked kite loops on short lines Sex, war, drugs, and death. Still an easy sell. Relax, yo. which for me that's also a bit crazy I've done it once and I don't think I'll be in a in a rush to do another unhooked kite loop on short lines the feeling of a of a super loop or a crazy low loop is just I don't know there's a moment where everything sort of stops and then it just speeds up really quickly sort of once that kite comes out the loop yeah the feeling is quite indescribable um, best feeling in the world <laughs> uh seven meter kites 10 meter lines and yeah i would say nothing less than 45 knots would be my optimal short line conditions and setup does it give you a bigger adrenaline rush to get the kite as close to the water as possible or to jump as high as possible kite as low as possible uh for sure kite as close to the water yeah I mean, the rush is pretty insane when you know that you can like, you probably have water droplets on your kite. It's, 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 it's an insane feeling, but it's a scary feeling at the same time. But the adrenaline when you make it out, it's pretty good. Wow, what an incredible dude and crazy talent. Now we're onto another madman, Jet Bradshaw in the house. It seems like South Africa is breeding wildebeest. Let's pick his brain on short line riding. What I consider short lines is no longer than 12 meter lines or 40 meter lines. And the reason I love it is because I can do the same trick over and over and over again. And I still get that insane adrenaline, that insane feeling of, of landing a trick. I don't have to tra chase the progression like a lot of the other riders do on long lines, inventing new tricks, world's first. I can literally stick with a straight kite loop and kite loop laid back roll for the rest of my career. And I'm satisfied, more than satisfied. Some of the disadvantages, well the main disadvantage is obviously you can't get as much height um, with the short lines. You know you're a bit restricted with your wind range. You know you're not going to take it 12 meter lines out in 20 knots. You need those minimum 30, 35 knots to, to make the short lines work. I mean you can still get away with it in a bit less wind but it's not that same, that same feeling. Um, Definitely, definitely the doubles and going for an S loop now is it's because um, first of all I don't think the kites were ever designed to do double loops. Now we're doing double loops on long lines and then the kites were never designed to do single loops on short lines and now we're doing double loops on short lines. So I think you know, that's definitely, I sometimes lie awake at night going, you know, I did it once and I can't be that one hit wonder, I've got to do it again. Obviously that was when the double loop had just, you know, started taking off and I was getting messages and stuff on Instagram. When are you doing the short line double loop? When are you doing the short line double loop? And I was getting like stressed out because I actually didn't want to do it. And I was like, fuck it. One day I got in the car with a friend, drove to Misty Cliffs, literally kited for 20 minutes, launched the kite, did the first double loop, 
crashed my brains out. And I, but even though I crashed, I was like, it's possible. Landed the second one, packed up, got in the car, drove home, never did it again. <laughs> never did it again. Shorter session at Misty Cliffs. Hey, you have it on camera. Yeah, yeah, got it on camera. Right. Yeah, yeah. Let's stick to the South African intel on shortline riding. It seems like that these guys have got it absolutely dialed. Now here with me, no other than Jason van der Spuyen, a phenomenal rider on both long and short lines. He's scoring many covers and millions of views with his mind-bending content. So let's dive into this. How did you get into short lines? Um, yeah, so probably Josh, to be honest with you, because he's a South African and he was one of the first people in South Africa to do short lines. So we'd all be riding along lines and you see Josh trying to mess around the short lines and it looked very sick. And then Ross then and player got into it after Josh and then it was me third. I was the third boy from Mesa. Well, it's like, no one, there was, there's no blueprint for short lines really, because you think of short lines that you just, taking short lines and doing a loop which is not the case at all it's like it's completely different from a normal kite loop so there were a lot of challenges to to figure out and also how to really get your kite super low um, you can't do a standard kite loop on short lines and just expect it to go under you it doesn't work like that so not smooth snaily from the start at all no yeah so definitely mates kiting with mates is probably the best thing kiting with Luca and Josh who do short lines as well so they do something crazy and you want to do something crazier and it gets pretty out of control. The line length I just played around with starting on 14s just to get comfortable but on the first day I was bored 14s already and put it straight onto 10s. Um, 10 is definitely the optimal length in my opinion. I ride 9.4 now but 10s is good. And yeah, the line, the line tension on the back line is also quite important. Um, what I figured out is you definitely want to put your kite on the most power setting on the back. You kind of want it to, the last bit of when you sheet and you want it to feel like it's got quite a lot of bar pressure on because then you can jump, sheet your kite in and it stays low while you bring it to the side. It stays in front of you and then you can sheet out and send it down. So that's quite important, the back line tension, the 10 meter lines and a seven square meter kite, yeah. If I had to choose, I'd probably just ride short lines the rest of my life. It's so much fun. It's so sick. <laughs> Any tips for me to nail that uh, super low loop? Don't steer it hard. You're not pulling a loop, you're pulling a super loop. You gotta just Gently steer the kite, so that it goes. Okay, now I feel that I know absolutely everything about riding short lines. And these guys gave me the golden tips to really go for that super loop. Just watching Jason go absolutely mental, like fully stretched out above his kite. Time for me to try his setup, his seven meter on the 10 meter line. I have to try this super loop. Let's see if I've got the guts. Gust, guts, gust, and guts. I
Fuck, that's crazy. Okay, are you gonna ride it with horse? I'm scared, I'll bring it on. Okay, sick. You saw looping it too much. Lower. You're looping from the wall. Yeah. You got a table. Yeah. Look with the other side. Point it down and just out and then it flies. Yeah, okay. You keep going from 12 and moving yeah. it. You gotta go like this. And then take it down and go. Okay. Well, well done. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, I really appreciated uh, Jason's support there because uh, yeah, I have such a muscle memory of cranking kite loops but this is really steering super low loops so it's a total different concept and yeah it's very hard to uh, cancel out my muscle memory like that and it was flipping scary but luckily this old man still got some balls. Woo! Stoked! Oh, that was fucking sick! <laughs> that was unintentional laid back! Fuck! No! No, 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 no! <laughs> totally on purpose! I hope you really enjoyed learning from these guys and thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, share it with your friends, hit that notification bell and I will see you next time. Much love, guys. Get to know Hannah Whitey a little bit better. Here's to try your kite as well. I'm gonna go on the eight meter apex. I mean, the eight meter apex. The eight meter apex. Yeah, give me some of that.